The general theory of evolution says that all living things came from a single cell and that cell came from something like a primordial soup. And for me as a chemist, the hardest problem for evolution is the origin of first life from non-living chemicals, and this is commonly called chemical evolution. Most people have heard of the Miller-Urey experiment, and it's in most textbooks still today. They wanted to see if organic molecules could come from inorganic precursors. So they took some simple chemicals and they ran through spark chamber. And most of the products they got really amounted to nothing more than a brown tar because random chemical reactions produced random molecules. And yeah, they found a few amino acids, but in a mixture of left and right handed forms. But what they didn't find are certain specific amino acids that are critical for life. They didn't find nucleotides. They didn't find any large biomolecules. To get living things, we need lots of huge molecules, and that means we have to get little molecules to combine into big molecules. Now, the problem is that chemicals don't react in that way. Everything I've learned in real chemistry shows that the reactions go in the opposite way from what's required for life to come from non-living chemicals. Any chemist trying to do that would not have water in the reaction because water tends to drive the reaction in the opposite direction towards the little molecules. And yet the primordial soup would inevitably have loads of water in it. So it's the last place any real chemist would try to make proteins or DNA. Another problem with chemical evolution is called the chirality problem. Now, amino acids in proteins and sugars in DNA come in two mirror image forms, like your left hand and right hand. But all the amino acids in our body are left-handed and all the sugars in DNA are right-handed. Uh, but a primordial soup would have an equal number of both. And it's quite complicated to get a single-handed mixture. And a primordial soup does not have that know-how and therefore it's totally suitable for the origin of life. The most common scenario for the evolutionary origin of life is called the RNA world. Here they imagine an ocean or a lake full of RNA molecules that are able to reproduce themselves and that slowly evolve into the first reproducing organism. The RNA world is a desperate attempt, a last straw, a grasping at nothing, and it is completely unscientific. <laughs>